You'd be surprised how often simple mistakes cause serious fires. Every day, fire brigades have to deal with hundreds of blazes caused by people being careless, failing to maintain electrical equipment, so it overheats and starts a fire. Overloading power points, so wiring can't cope and insulation fails, and failing to read the manufacturer's instructions. All reasons why fires at work cost lives, but with adequate training, many disasters could be prevented. When your fire alarm sounds, it may mean you are about to be involved in a full-scale emergency. If you know what to do, as they obviously do here, you should be all right. In this factory, fire drills are held regularly, so if there's a real fire, there shouldn't be any panic or confusion. Audrey Watts is the fire warden. That's why she is making sure the windows and doors are closed now everyone has left the building. In a real fire, her first job is to call the fire brigade. When everyone is outside, she checks again to make sure that no one is missing. Sue? Yeah. Bob? Yeah. Pam? Yeah. Elaine? But what about you? Do you know what to do if your fire alarm sounds? Has your company got a fire plan? How should you evacuate your building? And where should you reassemble? Who are your fire wardens? Where are your nearest fire extinguishers? And how easily could you use them? Different types of firefighting equipment do different jobs in different ways. Even the best equipment won't protect you if you don't use it properly. So let's spend a few minutes finding out what firefighting is all about. What you should have done in taking the extinguisher and approaching the fire, removing the pin, directing the horn, getting as closely as it's safe so to do to the fire and directing the jet in front of it. Just driving the flames away and thus the fire goes out. Fires are the result of a chemical reaction, a reaction we call combustion. It can only occur when three elements are present, fuel, heat and oxygen. As oxygen is always in the air around us, fires are normally started by bringing together the other two components, fuel and heat. To put a fire out, you must remove one of the same three components. You can cool the heat, Cut off the oxygen or eliminate the fuel. This is what firefighting experts call a class A fire. To you and me, that's a fire of free burning materials like paper, wood, cloth or furnishings. And you'll notice they're putting it out with water by cooling the heat until the fire is extinguished. Now, if that fire had been much larger, it could just as easily have been put out with water from this hose reel. Now, there are 30 meters of hose on this hose reel, but it's still quite easy to maneuver. A roller sees to that. A twist nozzle gives me a choice of spray. I can have a spray, ideal for damping down, or a jet for fighting fires or a combination of the two. A spray to act as a heat shield and a jet for fighting the fire. The water supply is unlimited. So, if there's a hose reel near where you work, take a good look at it and find out how it works. Read the instructions. Then, should a fire break out, you'll know what to do. You should also take a good look at your fire extinguishers you'll find instructions for use are printed on them. All modern chub extinguishers work like this. Remove the pin, aim and squeeze. When an extinguisher has been used, a flag appears to remind you to have it recharged and serviced. That applies to both cartridge operated and stored pressure extinguishers. So, as you have seen, 
water from hose reels and extinguishers is quite easy to use if you've been shown how to do it. But water won't solve every problem. See what I mean? That's what happens if you put water on burning oil. Let's try a different method. That was general purpose powder. General purpose because you can use it on any type of fire. It smothers the flames by cutting off the oxygen supply. But for flammable liquid fires like that, we could also have used this foam extinguisher. Remove the pin, aim and squeeze the handle. When you use foam, it's best to aim the jet at the edge of the fire and not directly onto it. The foam will then float back over the burning oil, cutting off the oxygen. So for burning liquid fires, which firefighting experts would call class B fires, we have this choice. General purpose powder or foam. In some factories, a foam unit mounted on a trolley may also be available. The nozzle will control the discharge over an area of up to 40 feet. Of course, the choice of fire extinguisher may not always be yours, as the correct extinguisher for any fire risk nearby should already be in position. But for general spillage fires, which spread rapidly, use powder for greater and faster coverage of the area. You can also use it if there's an electrical risk involved. Foam, on the other hand, can be used for a spillage fire, but the nature of the jet makes it more effective when the burning liquid is within a contained area. So now you know what these extinguishers are filled with and what they should be used for. For Class A fires of ordinary combustible materials, always use water. For Class B fires of paints, solvents and other flammable liquids, use foam from a fire extinguisher or a trolley. You can also use vaporizing liquid or general purpose powder. All easy to use and extremely effective. Let's summarize. For class A fires, use water from an extinguisher or a hose reel. For burning liquids, it's best to use foam or powder. But if they are not available, you can use carbon dioxide or halon. That leaves us with this black extinguisher. Again, it has instructions on the side telling us what to do. They also tell us that the extinguisher contains carbon dioxide. It's a little heavier than the others and it has a horn instead of a nozzle. Remove the pin, aim the horn and squeeze. The CO2 puts out the fire by cutting off the oxygen supply. Carbon dioxide extinguishers are ideal for fires involving electrical equipment. For electrical fires and small flammable liquid fires, you can also use halon. It's a vaporizing liquid. It's safe to use on electrical equipment and it's clean, so it doesn't leave deposits on delicate machinery. It's ideal for use on fires in vehicles. You'll notice that all the extinguishers are color-coded to make them easily identifiable. Red for water, cream for foam, blue for powder, green for halon, and black for CO2. A simple chart like this on your notice board can help you pick the right extinguisher in multi-risk areas. But if you're on the continent of Europe, you'll find all fire extinguishers are colored red, but their content is indicated. So now you know a bit more about firefighting. Your company should arrange training sessions like this, so you have a chance to use the equipment installed on your own premises.
Experience of having used firefighting equipment in training sessions can be invaluable in a real emergency. And we're going to gradually work around and work up the fire, killing the flames, and therefore we've stopped the spread of the fire. It's also essential to ensure that fire points are clearly identified and easy to get at. Don't let this happen. And remember, fire extinguishers won't last forever without attention. If they are to be relied on in an emergency, they must be regularly maintained by people who have the equipment and experience needed to do the job properly. Sharp cover guarantees your fire protection.